Naked Lunch was a long time in the, we waited a long time for that to happen while the money was being pulled together, uh, years I think. And uh, for a while there wasn't a script. David was working on it. So I kept rereading the book, which I had read in university, but had then, you know, kind of forgotten. So I kept rereading it. And I kept having nightmares. How are we going to do this? <laughs> and then David told me to read uh, another book, which was a, a biography of Burroughs. So I read that. And, and then I started to say, well, okay, well, this, is, this maybe is doable. <laughs> and I think that the, the, the actual Naked Lunch film is kind of a combination of the book, little bits from the book, and, the, and more of Burroughs writing the book than it is actually the book, <laughs> which makes it a little easier to film. And, wh and when we started it, we, we, when we actually finally got the money together and we started it, we went to, um, to Tangier and, and we scouted all kinds of locations, beautiful locations, took uh, hundreds of photographs, found locations that we wanted to use, decided which locations we could do in Toronto because there's, there were parts of it that were to take place in New York City and then parts that were to take place in Interzone, which was, you know, Tangier. So we, so we went back to Toronto. We started building the sets that we were going to, the New York type sets that were going to be in, done in Toronto and found locations for some of those. And, uh, and then the Gulf War broke out and we weren't able to go to uh, Tangier. So it was like, okay, now what do we do? Do we find some other location that, that looks something like it? And uh, so I sat down, I made a list, which I gave to David, of things that we could probably build in Toronto. And uh, he went back and looked at, took my list and rewrote the script and came back with another list. <laughs> and we ended up uh, building it. And in, uh, it, what we ended up doing was we took, like, the bug, he was a, an exterminator, the bug factory at the beginning, and we turned that into the drug factory. So we shot it first as a New York set, and then we added Moroccan elements to it. And, and changed the set and, you know, raised some areas so that it was more on different levels and changed that into the exter the, the bug, the drugs um, sh uh, store. And then the, the New York um, Moroccan restaurant we turned into Frost's apartment in Morocco. Uh, we did a lot of that, you know, the, and the bar, the New York bar was actually incorporated into the Cospa streets. And then I, I was building the Cospa street because they'd already started shooting at this point it's when we decided we had to build the Cospa. So I, I was building one section of the street and they'd shoot it and then I'd go, they'd go away and shoot something else and I'd come go back in and shoot another section until we finally had this whole circular thing with a kind of a cross in the center so you could shoot different angles to get different things. And the bar was actually in part of it. So if you're walking down the Cospa street, you walk past the New York bar with a, <laughs> probably really, it's part of it. In, in the end, I think it was better because he never really did go to Morocco. It was all a drug trip. I mean, he was all in his mind. So the fact that these locations that he was in in Morocco were really locations that, you know, places that he knew in his life in New York seemed to make it work better. And I think in the long run, it, it wasn't a travel log, you know, <laughs> and it worked much better. I like to use sets again if I can, but usually it's, it's not just because of budget, which is, has a big thing to do with it, but sometimes I, I even colors I tend to, if I, I know that I I have used certain colors with a, one particular character. I will maybe use it again somewhere else in another way, just just to f have this continuity that's happening. Um, it, it's uh, it, it sometimes can give that bizarre twist that you want without hitting people over the head with it. You know. <laughs> well, I think each time that, that I can think of in which David is. Um, tackling a subject that is really unusual, um, he tries to ground it in reality. As an example, uh, and that was Naked Lunch, because when I read it I, I had the, the perhaps foolish and a bold suggestion which was turned down that perhaps the, it would be interesting to make the sets almost expressionistic. And his reply to me was, well, what is, what's going on in the, in the in the film, in the script, is so unusual that I feel no need to do anything like that. In fact, I don't want that. So, in my turn, I felt free to make the lighting rather expressionistic, as I was not going to have strange Dr. Caligari-like sets. I still wanted to pursue that, that uh, path without emphasizing it too much.